watching Property Panorama with me, Jenny Hammond. For the six world powers in talks with Iran, the goals have always been clear. Blocking the Islamic Republic's path to a nuclear weapon and lifting sanctions on the country that have crippled its economy and had a knock-on effect for the rest of the world. I've come to speak to Lord Lamont, former Chancellor of the Exchequer and Chairman of the British Iranian Chamber of Commerce, to see what an agreement would represent. Lord Lamont, sanctions on Iran have been tightening since 2005, but you've always been strongly opposed to these. Why? Well, Frank, you work a lot with the FBI to target fraud. What are the major issues they're looking at? So what sort of things do you teach the FBI? Give me some tricks of the trade. OK, so say I have an idea. For example, I want to make sparkling wine out of rose petals rather than grapes. This is my dream. Great idea. <laughs> so do how it. do I is take it, something? Is it really it, no, dream? genuinely, it's still the idea. <laughs> <laughs> so how do I take something from just being an idea to market? What makes a terrorist organisation successful? Extreme views or the ability to recruit high numbers of dedicated and malleable followers? These might be contributing factors, but what it really boils down to is money. Joining me now down the line is Loretta Napoleoni, one of the leading experts on terrorist financing, and in the studio is financial barrister William Wilson. Well, Loretta, if I might start with you, terrorism, could it be described as a business? The tax breaks on buy-to-let mortgage are costing the Exchequer £6 billion a year. Now, that seems like a huge sum, but what he's proposing is to cut these tax breaks down from 40% to 20%. So actually, he's not going to recoup that £6 billion. Now, the reason he's doing this is because the buy-to-let market is burgeoning at the moment. And this has been made worse by the fact that the Pensions Freedom Act that came into play in April this year has meant that over 55s can actually take out a lump sum from their pensions. And a lot of them are doing this and they're going and taking out buy-to-let mortgages to buy a property and then they can have a monthly income. So this is flooding the market, which means that first-time buyers can't get on that property ladder at all. Well, Keith, it's certainly been quite a varied week when it comes to property stories. My favourite story that I read about was, of course, the city worker who's offering a room in his house for one pound a month, but it does come with a catch. You have to also work as his IT expert. So what do you make of this? Domestic work is one of the oldest professions in the world and represents up to 10% of total employment in some countries. But although rife, the practice often comes with lax legal protection. Visas being linked to employers, isolation from the community and language barriers, meaning that often domestic workers are left open to exploitation and sometimes even abuse. Love him or hate him, he's known for speaking his mind. Kelvin McKenzie, the man behind the headlines, Freddie Star Ate My Hamster and Gotcha, joins me now to speak about what it takes to spearhead the largest UK newspaper and succeed in media today. Well, Calvin, really your approach to business is perhaps you could say selling sensation. Well, Charlie Hebdo made headlines, obviously, a few weeks back. If you were still the editor of The Sun, would you have published those images knowing that probably would have raised profits, but it would have caused a backlash almost? Unconditional basic income. Is it the answer to Europe's unemployment problems and stimulating growth? Or misguided macroeconomic policy that could result in decreased productivity? With me now is Guy Stunting, the co-president of the Basic Income Earth Network, economist and financial journalist Liam Halligan, and former banker and economics commentator Francis Coppola to discuss if basic income is the future. But first, let's take a look at what is unconditional basic income. So basically, almost everybody would be worse off so, Guy, almost everybody would be worse off. As the co-president of the Basic Income Earth Network, I imagine you disagree with this statement. From the wealthiest country in West Africa to a civil war and a nine-year political crisis, the Ivory Coast has seen its fair share of turbulence. But now the country is enjoying peace, political stability and economic growth. I'm honoured to be speaking to His Excellency, Mr. Prime Minister Daniel Kablain Duncan. The World Bank's 2013 Doing Business Index ranked the Ivory Coast as the ninth hardest place in the world to do business. Do you think this is fair? The sum surpasses the 120 billion US dollars reconstruction bill for the 1995 Kobe earthquake in Japan. It's equal to the entire economic output of Sichuan last year, and three times what Beijing spent rebuilding the capital for the Olympic Games. The Chinese government count the Muslim population at around 24 million, but unofficial estimates vary greatly. Anywhere between 20 and 40 million 
with some people even saying the number supersedes 100 million. Welcome back, you're watching City Beat, a 60 minute fashion and lifestyle magazine show only on ICS. And today's episode is all about celebrities and superstars. So this yes. is the first time you've <laughs> left your baby. Yes, it's very hard. What's it like being a mum? It must be very exciting. Well, thank you very much for taking this interview, first of all. I'm delighted to be here. You're here in Shanghai to promote your new book, your autobiography, Speaking for Yourself. Why do you think this will appeal to a Chinese audience? How much power does a Prime Minister's wife have? You know, how involved in that are you? What is it like being a legend? Uh, no, legend sounds old, don't say that. No. OK, what is it like being... <laughs> what's a better word? Well, that's all for me, Jenny Hammond. But if you missed our show or want to watch it again, you can catch it online. And if you have any questions for our industry experts or simply want to get in touch, then please visit our website at www.thetenantsvoice.co.uk. Thanks for watching and bye for now.